Hello everyone, this is just a very first little update and info dump video on the MS-10 Soyuz launch failure that happened just a few minutes ago. Not really high quality, but at least uh, timely. I will make a more high quality in-depth look as soon as we know more, which would probably be later today. But as this just happened, I just wanted to uh, release a bit of background knowledge as well as the updates on what actually happened, although those are already floating around everywhere. But just wanted to uh, recap them quickly in a short video rather than a uh, one hour livestream recording where most of the time we're just waiting for updates. And I'll also uh, drop a bit of background knowledge so those not really in-depth familiar with spaceflight or the Soyuz rocket have a general idea of what these things mean. Again, just a quickly thrown together video coming back from a rather long silence. I will make other updates and uh, I had other videos planned but uh, now this came in between so uh, I'll have to share this little update first. So, what happened? Today, the uh, launch of Soyuz MS-10 was planned. The Soyuz MS being the modernized version of the Soyuz launch vehicle, or yet another modernized version. The Soyuz is a very old and reliable launch vehicle, and it has been modernized many, many times, and the MS version is the latest of these modernizations. As the number 10 kind of indicates, it hasn't been used quite that often yet, but often enough, and it's still based on the same rocket. Apart from rarely launching a few satellites, the Soyuz rocket is of course mostly known for resupplying the International Space Station, both in its unmanned version, the Progress, which just launches supplies, and the manned version, the Soyuz, which is currently the only manned operating spacecraft. Now, today's launch failed, and, well, most important things first, the two astronauts on board are all right. They survived the failure, they emergency landed, and they are in good conditions. So, uh, that's the most important uh, thing to any failure is, uh, did any humans get harmed? In this case, no. That's great. And now, of course, the first priority is to uh, keep it that way and uh, rescue these astronauts as quickly as possible. They emergency landed in the steppe of Kazakhstan. But, of course, this wasn't a planned landing, and uh, so they'll have to wait for search and rescue crews to arrive. Search and rescue crews did uh, leave pretty much immediately as the failure was known, since uh, this can hypothetically always happen, and uh, it's better to be safe than sorry, a search and rescue team is always on standby during a Soyuz launch, so that if it comes to a failure and an emergency landing, they can immediately deploy and search for the landed capsule. And as of recording this video, the uh, latest update is that uh, they are in contact with the astronauts, who themselves report to be in good condition, but they haven't quite reached them yet, they're still uh, on the way to the predicted landing spot. Now, the second priority after making sure that the humans on board, one American astronaut, one Russian cosmonaut, are uh, still safe, the uh, second priority, of course, is to find out what caused this so that in the future it can be prevented. And that is where it actually gets quite intriguing, because, as said before, the Soyuz is a very reliable rocket, and for it to have such a relatively catastrophic failure is very, very rare. There have been uh, modified Soyuz vehicles that have had uh, minor failures, uh, like navigation issues, which uh, resulted in a wrong orbit deployment. But an actual launch failure in a Soyuz hasn't happened for many decades. Now, we don't know what exactly happened, but the uh, timeline of events uh, gives a few indicators. The uh, liftoff occurred all right, and everything was fine all the way to booster separation, or the Korolev cross, where the uh, strap-on side boosters separate from the core stage which is the first staging process on the way to orbit, and shortly after that, the launch escape system triggered and 
pulled the capsule with the astronauts inside away from the rest of the rocket very rapidly in order to uh, clear a potential explosion and then let the capsule fall down, re-enter and parachute down. Now these uh, emergency re-entry and landing scenarios are always a little bit critical because the thing is uh, a rocket could hypothetically fail during every single second of the launch process. Basically if you if you have a launch going by plan, hypothetically every single second or every single millisecond of that planned launch process is a point where it could hypothetically go wrong. So there is a basically near infinite number of different scenarios in which an emergency landing could happen and so it's not quite as precisely planned through as a planned re-entry and landing. And the astronauts do go through some higher g-forces since they're actually slower, which means they land steeper. They're already at a very high altitude, but they're much slower than orbital velocity, so there's nothing really keeping them up. They just fall down and descend very fast through the atmosphere, which gets denser, and so g-forces build up a lot more than during a planned re-entry, but still within safe limits. And of course the firing of the launch escape system itself is also always a little bit rough. It's uh, supposed to safely pull you away even if the rest of the rocket completely explodes underneath you. The launch escape system is basically a small, not very efficient, not very long range, but powerful small fireworks type rocket that uh, pulls the capsule away from the rocket so fast that you are safe even if the rest of the rocket explodes, but that also means you get shaken quite a bit. If you uh, look at the uh, rocket before launch, by the way, the launch escape system is the uh, weird looking little towel at the tip of the rocket. It's above the capsule and has uh, nozzles slightly angled to the side. And it's kind of one of the obvious features by which to identify a manned rocket from the outside compared to an unmanned rocket. Now the exact fate of the uh, actual launch vehicle or the actual rocket after the capsule was separated isn't known yet, but we can speculate and we can speculate quite precisely based on what we know. Since the failure occurred just after booster separation, it's safe to say that during the booster separation, the core stage most likely got damaged in some way that caused the escape system to trigger. That leaves few possibilities, either an assembly or technical error caused the uh, staging process itself to uh, damage the core stage or due to turbulence or some other unforeseen extreme event, a, a piece of the booster falling away made contact with the core stage again, essentially uh, slammed back into the core stage, though not necessarily quite as extreme as one might imagine. Now it's important to remember how the Soyuz is made up. The Soyuz rocket during its launch goes through three phases. The first phase is the phase where the uh, core stage and the uh, surrounding boosters fire. These are the uh, five main engines at the bottom, the uh, core stage and the boosters having identical engines and the same fuel consumption but a, the core stage has a larger fuel tank and burns for longer. After some time these strap-on boosters fall away and the core stage remains. Then, some time later, the core stage shuts down and the ignites and separates, actually in this order, since the Soyuz does a hot staging technique where the uh, first stage, or the uh, core stage, is actually still running when the upper stage ignites, and this helps to settle the fuel. Basically, as long as the rocket is under acceleration, there's something resembling gravity on the fuel tanks so that the fuel is pushed down into the engines and so the uh, engines have to be constantly running so the upper stage engine actually ignites before the lower stage engine or the core engine shuts down and then they separate that's also why they have this 
grid structure between the stages so, so the uh, hot gases can vent out safely. This didn't happen during this launch, however, at all. It didn't even get that far in the first place, since the failure happened long before the upper stage would ignite and the uh, core stage would fall away. The failure happened well within the burn time of the core stage, just after the strap-on boosters separated. Now this core stage, while it runs longer than the boosters, has been running all the way since liftoff. So it's not really a mechanical error in the engines. If the engines had been faulty from the beginning, then the launch would have failed pretty much on the launch pad, since the engines that were running during the failure had already been running during liftoff. So it's not totally but almost certain at this point that uh, there was a issue with the boosters, which then caused the boosters to damage the core stage when they separated. The root cause coming either from the boosters or from outside. Now, the very latest updates are that the search and rescue teams have reached the capsule and the astronauts have both been safely taken out of the capsule and are in a good condition and are now being prepared for their way back to Moscow. An official investigation has also been started into the reason behind this failure. Now this is a bit of an issue. The Soyuz is currently the only manned transport vehicle to the International Space Station. And while minor issues, launch delays or minor technical difficulties in space can usually be quickly resolved and glossed over, this might delay further operations. In fact, it almost certainly will. Now, we currently do not have uh, just another Soyuz lying around to launch them again tomorrow. And even if we had, and I mean the uh, Russians can just build another Soyuz, but even if we have another Soyuz, with this kind of spectacular failure, you can't just build the same rocket again and uh, try again. You have to figure out where the root cause of the failure was and basically redo the entire safety rating process of the rocket to make sure that the next time you launch it, this does not happen again. With the commercial launch program having some minor delays and being pushed back to basically a near future project rather than an instant solution, and the Soyuz being the only manned vehicle to the ISS, that means we currently have no means of bringing any humans to the International Space Station or into space at all. That is at least none that could at this very moment be considered safe or reliable. And depending on how deep or how complicated this issue turns out to be later on, that could mean a minor delay, but it could also mean that ISS crew rotations are paused for the next half year or longer. Now we can still bring humans back home from the International Space Station. The Soyuz capsule itself is uh, absolutely fine. It performed perfectly today. It's the uh, launch system or the booster that failed. So it's only launching people up that has a reliability issue. The uh, Soyuz capsule itself is still absolutely trustworthy and of course this is speculating a bit far but hypothetically if this failure takes long to sort out and with a certain limit on uh, the crew stays on the ISS this could hypothetically mean that the ISS will spend a little time unmanned as crews return but we don't have any any way to launch new crews up but that is indeed speculating a bit far, similar to uh, the idea that it has been an engine failure. We know that something has gone wrong with the engines, but we don't know if the cause actually was in the engines, or if the fuel tank just got damaged, or whatever. Really, any such uh, speculation is currently just based on livestream callouts and pure speculation. It could be an engine failure, it could just be a structural failure. Either way, I'm glad that the astronauts are safe and I'll keep you updated further. Thanks for watching.